Hey guys, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today we're doing something a little bit different. For once, we've got both me and Kurt on camera, and Question Girl is running the actual uh, camera today. And we have got a few guests with us. Who are you ladies? Aubrey, Leah, who's mm -hmm. nine years old. Oh. And I'm ten. And Leah's ten. Yeah. So we have a nine-year-old and a ten-year-old with us today, and they have come up with a set of questions that they want to ask the snake experts. So, they're going to play the role of Question Girl. Question Girl will be Camera Girl, and Kurt and I are on film. Everybody got that? Yeah! Alright, we ready to do this thing? What's the first question, Leah? Okay, why are the eggs soft and not hard? Well, one reason is because the snakes move around a lot and it's easier to, for them to move over logs and around rocks. You know, if there's eggs that are soft in there, they kind of move around. And <clears throat> just mostly, you know, from what I know, there might be one or, you know, uh, some reptile out there that has hard eggs, but, you know, 99% of the reptiles out there lay soft eggs. So it's just what that type of species does. Next question. How many eggs can a snake lay? Ooh, well that depends on the kind of snake it is. If you have ball pythons, they average four to six. And I've even heard of as few as one. When you get to your really big, like your reticulated pythons, it's nothing for them to lay 40 plus. So there's a big wide range of how many eggs they can have from one all the way to over 40. I've heard of even some record clutches in the 70s, which would be 70 eggs from one female. I feel really sorry for that mom when they're like all two years old having fits. It's just terrible. Hey. Okay, how many snakes are in, like, how many snakes are there species? How many species of snakes are there in the world? Yeah. There are thousands upon thousands. There's very, very different variations, very, and they're on every continent except for Antarctica. Okay. Huh? It's too cold. Yep, it's too cold for them. All right. How many different species do you have in here? Well, we have ball pythons, that's one species. Then we have carpet spy py pythons, and that's another species. And we have one rattlesnake. So we have three different species of snakes in here. Okay, and there's many more, so... <laughs> is, the, is the whole snake's body the tail? No, the whole snake isn't made up of just the tail. Actually, the tail is just the very end part of the snake. And <clears throat> the snake is, you know, set up just like us. It has lungs, it has stomach, it has, you know, basically everything internally. Guts. And I think Matt's going to pull out a snake and yeah, show you. Yep. Yeah. So right here, what's this part here called? Butthole. The cloaca. Uh, Butthole. Oh. Well, so, that's really kind of what it is. Yeah, so right here... That's just the end part of the snake, which is just the, the tail. And the rest of it would be the body, and then there's the head. Can you show the Kaleka one more time? Yep. Probably the most utilitarian orifice ever known. Right there. And then that part there is the tail. Okay. Now, I think your turn to ask a question. How do you tell if the snake is a girl or a boy, or oh. female or male? Remember that cloaca we just talked about? Yeah. Snakes keep their organs, their boy parts and girl parts, internally. So what we have to do, there's two ways. One, we can place a probe in there and see by how far it goes, whether it's male or female. The other way is we can expose the organs, which we'll do here. We're going to get technical. They're called hemipenes. I'll show up on the camera there. See that red piece? If I move my thumb, they go back in. I put pressure, they're going to come back out. So those are his hemipenes that he would use to breed. So that means that this snake is a boy. If we did that, he didn't have any of those, then we'd know it's a girl. Some snakes you can actually look at and tell. The ball pythons, it's pretty hard, so you pretty much have to like kind can of look in there. Can you go get a girl snake and show us? You want me to look at a girl snake and show you? I can do that. You pick a good one for it. Hey, get back in there. And when you're talking about probing, is it the depth that tells you the different sex of the snake? Yes. And is it which one is which? The male, the probe is going to go much further than the female, I believe. I'm not really a prober. I always do popping. It's just easier for me visually. 
but typically because of that channel that the hemipene fits into, it allows that probe to slip deeper. On a lot of snakes, the males have a visually longer tail for that same purpose. This is one that I know is supposed to be a female. Come here, snakey. We'll do an entire video on this one day and exactly how we do it. Oh, didn't get a very good one there. And there, and you can see there's none of those little red bumps. And when I move my thumb, nothing goes back in or out. Mm -hmm. Now, does that That's hurt the snake when you do that? It doesn't, as long as you do it right. If you're doing it with too much pressure or too hard, you can damage the snake. You can actually prolapse those organs where they don't go back in, and you can see they went back in there fine. So you do want to be careful, and it kind of takes some practice. And uh, the best thing to do is watch a lot of YouTube videos on how to do it, including ours that we'll make, and find somebody in person that knows how to do it. I went to a guy that had more experience than me, had him show me, had him help me learn the pressures, had him help, had him help me get it down to a fine science so I could do it with confidence without damaging my snakes. So that would be the best recommendation I have to learn. Why are some snakes venomous? Well, because some snakes hunt their prey by biting it and coiling around it. Other snakes can't do that. So the snakes that can't coil around it or just overpowered often develop venom. It's the way they were developed over the last million years. So when they bite the prey, they can inject the venom, and that venom will then kill the prey so they can go eat it. They also use that venom to defend themselves. So if something much bigger, like say a person, comes over there and starts messing with that snake, it may bite that person, not because it's mean, but just to say, hey, leave me alone. I don't have hands and feet. I can't punch and kick you. I don't have claws like a cat. I can't scratch you. But I do have these teeth with this nasty venom, and it's all I've got, and I'm going to use it. So they develop it to be defensive, and they also develop it to hunt. When you have a big, large snake, like a big reticulated python, it really doesn't need venom because it's so big, nothing's really going to eat it, not too many things anyway. Because it will scare it away, so it doesn't have any venom or anything in it? Well, when you get something like, let's say, a green anaconda that weighs 350 pounds, it can overpower most things, so it doesn't need the venom. It's so strong, it can you know, bite, hold on, or wrap around whatever it is and take care of anything it needs to defensively that way or to get food that way that they never need the venom so they don't develop it. So those snakes don't have venom that constrict. What I mean by constrict is coil around stuff and squeeze it like we fed snakes the other day. They gave it a really tight they, hug. Yeah, yep. they could pop our wrists in five seconds. Well, yeah. these guys probably couldn't do that, but some big ones are strong enough to. And the smaller ones, like, that don't constrict tend to have venom. Although there are some really big snakes that do have venom. That one. Well these are constrictors too. They'll wrap up. They don't have any venom. Like your biggest venomous snake is a king cobra. And they get really long, but yet they still have venom. But you'll never see a king cobra wrap around prey and squeeze it. They always bite, release, and let the venom do the work for them, and then they go eat the prey. Okay. What is the difference of venom? I mean, what is the difference between venom and poison? Well, poison, if you eat it, it makes you sick. Venom, you can eat and it won't hurt you. So if you eat a venomous snake, you're not going to get sick. But if it gets injected into your blood system, into your muscles, your veins, your arteries, anything like that, underneath your skin where it can absorb in there, then it's going to hurt you. So like, think about it this way. If you have a poison frog, and you lick it, it's going to make you sick. But if you lick a venomous snake, it wouldn't, but if it bites you, it will. Does that make sense? But how can you tell without, like, eating the snake or stuff like that? <laughs> well, the best way is if you're not sure, just leave it alone. But what if you, you really want to lick the snake? Well, we shouldn't lick snakes. Typically, they don't like that. And plus, they carry salmonella on their skin, so you could get a different sickness that's not poison from licking one. So licking snakes, probably a bad idea. But yeah, they can, uh, if you're not sure if it's a venomous snake, the best thing is just to leave it be. Don't lick snakes. And don't lick snakes. It was probably a bad example used by an adult, but it was the best one I had at the moment. Yeah, because if you lick it, they could, they could easily grab a chance to bite the back of your neck. You Camera girl's laughing, so if it's unsteady, that's why. Ha <laughs> ha Next question. Avoid the glitter. Why are baby snakes so big? Basically, when snakes are born, they're going to be try to try to be as big as they can so they can, you know, kind of help take care of themselves. 
if it's too small and they kind of struggle, they'll, they'll probably die. And that's one that's one day old. And it just kind of depends on the type of the snake. You know, like a smaller snake is going to have smaller babies, and a bigger snake is going to have bigger snake babies. So you're saying, like, pythons tend to have bigger babies than, like, a corn snake. Yes. I guess big is relative. Yeah. If you're my mom, that snake is 13 feet long. Okay? But if you're me, it's, like, you know, 12 inches. So it all depends on who you are and how scared of them you are, I guess. And you have one more question? Say goodbye. Yep. Yeah. How do male and female snakes make out? Oh, that's a loaded question for this age group. But they actually do. One of the things that they'll do is a female, well, she'll wag her tail sometimes, okay? You'll see that tail in there, a wagon, and they'll spray, kind of like a cat does. And it puts out these things called pheromones. But the male snakes smell of that, and it makes them be like, hey, lady, I kind of like you. And so that's what they'll do. Also, a lot of your snakes, we'll see if he's got any, have, at least in your pythons, which is what we typically talk about, have what are called spurs. And they're located right there. See that? Right there's a spur, and right there's a spur on either side of that cloaca we talked about. They'll tickle the female like that. And that kind of tells the female, that's kind of like flirting. You guys ever flirted in school? No. I hope not, because boys, boys are gross. Boys do that. Boys do that? Yeah, like a boy picks on you to flirt, or kind of tickling the girl to flirt. And then you'll also sometimes see just the way their body positions are as they lay next to each other, and eventually that will lead to something like this, if we can kind of see it. See how their tails are right next to each other? Yeah. Those two snakes aren't actually breeding yet, but that's a, fl a form of what I would kind of call snakes making out. We're kind of flirting. He's trying to get his tail near hers. And when they actually breed, those cloacas, which are the most utilitarian hole in the world, will be pressed together. One question. What kind of snake is this and what kind of snake is this? Well, that is question 11, you cheater. You're only supposed to have 10. <laughs> but I'll answer it anyway. This is an exanthic. And that is what's called a hypo or a ghost. And this is a project that Kurt's working And Kurt, what are you trying to make with this? Basically, I'm trying to make a true ghost. And to do that, you uh, mix the exantic gene with the ghost gene. And both of those genes are recessive. So we have to get both the mother and the parent carrying both of the genes. And right now, all we have is one parent carrying each of the genes. So it's going to take a few years before we get the pairs that we need to make that, but this is the starting process of that. So you're going to make new snakes? Yes. So what would this produce? Like where I get exantics or ghosts or anything? Basically you would get a normal that will carry a exantic gene and a ghost gene. Okay. We have to but they won't express it. Okay, then breeding those back to get that recessive hits that true ghost or chasing, right? Yep. Excellent. Any other questions? Question, question girl slash oh, camera I know. Clarification point. So what you're saying is that the female farts on the boy <laughs> and that's apparently turning on the snake to want to mate. Less likely that she farts on the boy. So we're going to be <laughs> crude of it. More likely that you'll see a female, not always, but sometimes. This champagne is, is a great example. She's a good one doing it. Mate, try to take it some time. She will crawl around the cage and she'll take that tail and wagon. And it's not a fart. She's actually spraying what looks like a urine, but it's uh, got a lot of pheromone in it. She's more spraying pheromones. Like a male cat will mark his territory. She's making it known that she's, uh, you know, she's, she's available. She's single, you know, down to party kind of thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's kind of what she's doing there. Oh. That's about the best I can say it with a 9 and 10 year old in here. Okay. <laughs> I know one more question. Okay. Just one more. What will you call the new species of snake? Well, <laughs> basically we're trying to work on a couple of different projects, and those are secret right now. Top secret. But once we get them, you know, then we can pick out what names we want. If you're the first one to make a snake, you get to name it. Why don't you, why don't you call the snakes Olympus reptiles? Well, that might be Olympus what we do. Reptile. We might. But part of that is the secret knowledge of grown-ups. That's right. So you have to be a grown-up to have that secret knowledge right now. Bummer. Well, Bummer sucks. Well, thanks for watching our video. If you have any comments or any questions, you know, please leave them below. And what Don't should they do? Don't forget to press that like button and, and subscribe. subscribe.
and put a comment in those comments below. Also, don't forget that. Well, they don't even need me. My job is gone with these two around. Thanks a lot. <laughs>